ಇಂಟಿ ನಾವು ಲಾಡ್ಜ್ ಹೋಗಿಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ which refers to one who knows how to discriminate between reality and unreality is very significant in this connection and arthavid is also called paramahamsa paramahamsa accepts only the active principle of everything just as a swan accepts only the milk from a mixture of water and milk a paramahamsa accepts only the supreme personality of god that has his life and soul neglecting all external material things guru maharaj was in this category and due to his determination he achieved the result he desired but still when he returned home he was not very pleased translation my prayer answered dhru maharaj's heart which was pierced by the arrows of the harsh words of his stepmother 
was greatly aggrieved and thus when he fixed upon his goal of life, he did not forget his misbehavior. He did not demand actual liberation from this material world, but at the end of his devotional service, when the Supreme Personality of God had appeared before him, he was simply ashamed of the material demands he had in his mind. Purport. This important verse has been discussed by many stalwart commentators. Why was Guru Maharaj not very pleased even after achieving the goal of life he desired? A pure devotee is always free from any kind of material desires. In the material world, one's material desires are almost, sorry, are all most demonic. One thinks of others as one's enemies and one thinks of revenge against one's enemies. One aspires to become the topmost leader or topmost person in this material world and thus one competes with all others. This has been described in the Bhagavad Gita, 16th chapter, as Asuri. A pure devotee has no demand from the Lord. His only concern is to serve the Lord sincerely and seriously, and he is not at all concerned about what will happen in the future. In the Mukundamala Stotra, King Kulushekhar, author of the book, states in his prayers, My Lord, I, do not, I don't want any position of sense gratification within this material world. I simply want to engage in your service perpetually. Similarly, Lord Chaitanya and Sri Shastika also prayed, My Lord, I do not want any amount of material wealth, I do not want any number of materialistic followers, nor do I want any attractive wife to enjoy. The only thing I want is that I may engage life after life in your service. Lord Chaitanya did not pray even for mukti or liberation. In this verse, my prayer replied to Vidura that Guru Maharaj, influenced by a revengeful attitude towards his insulting stepmother, did not think of mukti nor did he know what mukti was. Therefore, he failed to aim for mukti as his goal in life. But a pure devotee also does not want liberation. He is a soul completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord and he does not demand anything from the Lord. This position was realized by Dhru Maharaj when he saw the Supreme Personality of Godhead present personally before him because he was elevated to the Vasudeva platform. The Vasudeva platform refers to the stage at which material contamination is conspicuous by absence only, or in other words, where there is no question of the material modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance, and one can therefore see the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because on the Vasudeva platform one can see God face to face, the Lord is also called Vasudeva. Guru Maharaj's demand was for a position so exalted that it was never enjoyed even by Lord Brahma, his great-grandfather. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is so affectionate and kind towards his devotee, especially to a devotee like Guru Maharaj, who went to render devotional service in the forest alone at the age of only five years, that although the motive might be impure, the Lord does not consider the motive. He is concerned with the service. But if a devotee has a particular motive, the Lord directly or indirectly knows it, and therefore he does not leave the devotee's material desires unfulfilled. These are some of the special favors by the Lord to a devotee. Dhruva Maharaj was offered Bhrugaloka, a planet that was never decided upon by any conditioned soul. Even Brahma, although the topmost living creature within this universe, was not allowed to enter the Bhrugaloka. Whenever there is a crisis within the universe, the demigods go to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Shiroda Kusai Vishnu, and they stand on the beach of the milk ocean. So the fulfillment of Dhruva Maharaj's demand, a position more exalted than that of even his great-grandfather Brahma, was offered to him. Here in this verse, the Lord is described as Muktipati, which means one under whose lotus feet there are all kinds of Mukti. There are five kinds of Mukti, Sayujya, Sarupya, Salokya, Samipya and Sarshti. Out of these five Muktis, which can be achieved by any person engaged in devotional service to the Lord, the one which is known as Sayujya is generally demanded by Mayavadi philosophers. They demand to become one with the impersonal Brahman impulsions of the Lord. In the opinion of many scholars, this Sayujya Mukti, although counted among the five kinds of Mukti, is not actually Mukti because from Sayujya Mukti one may again fall down to this material world. This information we have from Srimad Bhagavatam Tantra 10, chapter 2, text 32, where it is said, Patanti Artha, which means they again fall down. The monist philosopher, after executing severe austerity, merges into the impersonal effulgence of the Lord, but the living entity always wants reciprocation and loving affairs. 
Therefore, although the monist philosopher is elevated to the status of being one with the effulgence of the Lord, because there is no facility for associating with the Lord and rendering service unto Him, he again falls into this material world and his service propensity is satisfied by materialistic welfare activities like humanitarianism, altruism and philanthropy. There are many instances of such fall downs even for great sannyasis in the Mayavad school. Therefore, Vaishnava philosophers do not accept Sayuji Mukti to be within the category of Mukti. According to them, Mukti means transferal to the loving servant, service of the Lord from one's position of serving Maya. Lord Chaitanya also says in this connection that the constitutional position of a living entity is to render service to the Lord. That is real Mukti. When one is situated in his original position, giving up artificial positions, he is called Mukta or liberated. In, in the Bhagavad Gita, this is confirmed. Anyone who engages in the rendering transcendental loving service to the Lord is considered to be Mukta or Brahma Bhuta. It is said in Bhagavad Gita that a devotee is considered to be on the Brahma Bhuta platform when he has no material contamination. In the Padma Puran, this is also confirmed. Mukti means engagement in the service of the Lord. The great sage Maitreya explained that Guru Maharaj did not desire in the beginning to engage in the service of the Lord, but he wanted an exalted position better than his great grandfathers. This is more or less not service to the Lord, but service to the senses. Even if one gets the position of Brahma, the most exalted position in this natural world, he is a conditioned soul. Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati says that if one is elevated to real pure devotional service, he considers even great demigods like Brahma and Indra to be on an equal level with an insignificant insect. The reason is that an insignificant insect has a desire for sense gratification and even a great personality like Lord Brahma also wants to dominate this material nature. Sense gratification means domination of material nature. The whole competition between conditioned soul is based upon domination of this material nature. Modern scientists are proud of their knowledge because they are discovering new methods to dominate the laws of material nature. They think that this is the advancement of human civilization. The more they can dominate the material laws, the more advanced they think they are. Guru Maharaj's propensity in the beginning was like that. He wanted to dominate this material world in a greater position than Lord Brahma. Therefore, elsewhere it is described that the appearance of the Lord, when Guru Maharaj thought, sorry, therefore elsewhere it is described that after the appearance of the Lord, when Guru Maharaj thought and compared his determination to his final reward, he realized that he had wanted a few particles of broken glass, but instead had received many diamonds. As soon as he saw the Supreme Personality of God face to face, he immediately became conscious of the unimportance of his demand from the Lord to have an exalted position better than Lord Brahma. When Guru Maharaj became situated on the Vasudev platform due to seeing the Lord face to face, all his material contamination was clear. Thus he became ashamed of what his demands were and what he had achieved. He was very much ashamed to think that although he had gone to Madhuvan, giving up the kingdom of his father, and he had gotten a spiritual master like Naradhuni, he was still thinking of revenge against his stepmother and wanted to occupy an exalted position within this material world. These were the causes of causes for his moroseness, even after he received all the desired benedictions from the Lord. When Dhruva Maharaj actually saw the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there was no question of a revengeful attitude towards his stepmother, nor any aspiration towards sorry, nor any aspiration to lord over the material world, but the Supreme Personality is so kind that he knew that Dhruva Maharaj wanted to be. Speaking before Dhruva Maharaj, he used the word Vedaham, because when Dhruva Maharaj demanded material benefits, the Lord was present within his heart and so knew everything. The Lord always knows everything a man is thinking. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita also. Vedaham Samkita means. The Lord fulfilled all Guru Maharaj's desires. His revengeful attitude towards the stepmother and, and stepbrother was satisfied. His desire for a more exalted position and that of his grand, great grandfather was also fulfilled. And at the same time, his eternal position in Trubaloka was fixed. Although Guru Maharaj's achievement of an eternal planet was not conceived of by him, Krishna thought, what will Dhruva do with an exalted position within this material world? Therefore, he gave Dhruva the opportunity to rule this material world for 36,000 years with unchangeable senses and the chance to perform many great sacrifices and thus become the most reputed king within this material world. 
And after finishing with all this material enjoyment, Dhruva would be promoted to the spiritual world which includes the Dhruva Loka. Om Ajnana Timiram Dhrasya Jnana Jnana Shalakya Chakturna Melikam Yena Tasmai Sri Gura Vena Maha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupam Padamakam Dadatiswa Padantikam Vandeham Sri Gura Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Shcha Sri Rupam Chakrajatam Sahaganata Kunatham Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savatrutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Mitam Sucha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhana Sute Devi Pranamami Narikriye Mancha kalpata rubhyascha kripasin dubhya evacha patitanam bhavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namon namaha namon vishnu padaya krishna prishthaya putave srimate bhakti vedanta swamaniti namane namaste saraswati deve gauravani pracharine nirvisesha sunyavadi paschatya deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is a very beautiful verse. Um, so Vidra is asking why Guru Maharaj? Well, it was a very important question. Why Guru Maharaj was not satisfied even after attaining the greatest benediction that one can possibly achieve? Um, and uh, Maitreya Muni is explaining very nicely why Guru Maharaj was not satisfied. See, this is uh, the special benediction of Krishna. Even we have, we have in history demons like Hiranyakashipu, Ravana, who also wanted absolute super, uh, supremacy in this material world. And Guru Maharaj also had the same desire. But the difference was that Ravana and Hiranyakashipu were against the supremacy of, of the Lord. Whereas, um, and they actually uh, offered their prayers and worship to demigods. Hiranyakashipu offered his prayers to Lord Brahma and Ravana offered his prayers to uh, Lord Shiva. But Guru Maharaj wanted the same thing, but he wanted, uh, he offered his uh, worship to Lord Vishnu. And we can see the classic difference between the results of the three. See, although a devotee may uh, desire the same thing as a demon, of course, a, desire, a devotee and a demon, they have different desires. But um, in, when starting, when beginning his devotional service, a prakrita bhakta, a materialistic devotee may, may have all the same materialistic uh, desires. So, if one goes to Krishna for fulfilling his materialistic desires, then you see the result. One is inimical and one is favorable to Krishna. The demons are inimical and the devotee is favorable. And here we have um, classic example of Guru Maharaj, he was given his planet of Dhrubaloka higher than even Lord Brahma. Whereas even Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha or uh, sorry, Hiranyakashipu Ravana, although they prayed to Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, they could not get a position greater than Brahma or Shiva. They could not. But here Guru Maharaj got position greater than Brahma. So one thing is that 
by demigod worship we cannot um, become more powerful than the demigod whom we worship and also such results that the demigod give are temporary antavattu phalam tesham tad bhavati alpame dhasam stated in the bhagavad gita antavattu phalam tesham tad bhavati alpame dhasam devan deva yajo yanti So, men of small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods, but my devotee is ultimately reach my supreme planet. See, this is the exact thing that happened in this verse, today's verse. Dhruva Maharaj attained ultimately Dhruva Loka, which is, which is part of the uh, spiritual world. And after this life, he was going back to Godhead. And even in this life, he was given undisputed uh, supremacy over the entire universe for 36,000 years. That means uh, 100 years of the demigod. And after that he would, uh, you know, attain the kingdom of God, Vaikuntha. So this is the difference. So for all material, even for material purposes, it is, it is um, um, advised in the Srimad Bhagavatam that one go to Krishna. Akamo sarva kamo va moksha kamo dharati tibrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param. previous verse said alpamedasa means those who are less intelligent but here a person who has broader intelligence akama sarvakama moksha kama udarathi udarathi means one who has broad intelligence tibrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusha param whether he be full of all material desire without any material desire or desiring liberation must by all means worship the supreme whole the personality of godhead now the demons who uh, fought against the Lord, like Ravana and Hiranyakashipu, they attained supremacy over this universe, partial supremacy. Uh, they could not go above Lord Brahma or anything like that. They were just fighting with the demigods who were on the Swargalo platform. Above that, they did not have much jurisdiction. But uh, after they fought with the Lord and were killed by the Lord, they also actually attained Mukti. Because even by being killed by the Lord, one attains liberation. But, as Prabhupada very elaborately uh, described in the purport of today's verse, um, the mukti that uh, demons achieve is also achieved by the Mayavadi impersonalists and that is called Sayuji mukti. So there are five kinds of mukti. First is Sayuji. Sayujya Mukti means to merge in the effulgence of the Lord, in the Brahma Jyoti sky, be one of the particles. Merge means you don't really merge, you just be hanging, suspended in the spiritual sky as one of the particles of the Brahma Jyoti, effulgence of the Lord. So that is Sayujya Mukti. And um, that Mukti is not very uh, safe, 
very secure. It's not very secure. So because I had explained the Prabhupada quoted this verse in the Prabhupada. Mukti, when one attains, it is actually Vimukta Maninas. It is imagined uh, liberation. Because it is a very insecure position. Why insecure? Because the soul is active. Even in this material world, in the material body, the soul is active. The whole reason why this material body is so animate is because of the soul inside. As Srila Prabhupada has described, the soul is the active principle in the body. So even in a diseased condition, you should understand this is our diseased condition, our material body is a disease on the pure spirit soul, it's an infection. So if even in the diseased condition we are so active, how is it that when we become healthy we become totally inactive? That doesn't even make sense. If a person is in the hospital and if he is very sick, even not even hospital, even when one is with fever or something, one is very uh, weak and he can't move much, but he still moves, you know, he goes to the toilet or whatever, he does what is necessary. So there is still movement. So after the, the fever is gone, if he doesn't move at all, that means he is dead. Even from bad to worse. So the fever can end in two ways. Either he gets healthy and active again, or he dies and there is no more fever. What, what fever does a dead body have? So, the, the impersonalists or the demons, they try for this kind of cure. Of, oh, I have a problem with my body, let me, let me die. No, no more problem with the body. As Prabhupada said, if the eye has cataract, the solution is to remove the cataract so that we can actually see. But oh, this eye has cataract, so remove the eye. So that what, is, what kind of solution is that? So Mayavadi solution is like this. And the, and the demons also achieve the same, same result. So Mayavadi is Aruhi Prichena. They perform very severe austerities and uh, they achieve this so called position of uh, liberation. But those who are uh, uh, stalwart demons, uh, they also achieve the same position without any uh, big, big uh, tapasya. See? So, therefore, and the, the problem is patantyadha. Patantyadha, there is no shelter there. Just like we, we go in aeroplane, we go high in the sky, you know, when the aeroplane goes, it goes until 36,000 feet, 38,000 feet. And because there is no shelter there, there is no runway, there is no landing strip, so again you have to come down. So there is no shelter. Similarly, when one goes to the Brahma Jyoti, he is in the sky suspended. He has to land somewhere. And when he doesn't, does not land on the Vaikuntha Loka, and then he again comes back to land and somewhere else he has to land. So he will land in the material world. So, to enter into Vaikuntha Loka, just like to enter into any country, we need visa, we have, we need, uh, you know, credentials. Similarly, to enter into Vaikuntha Loka, there is credentials, there is visa required. And the visa is, uh, Bhaktya Mama Bhijanati, Yavanyas Chasmi Tattvataha, uh, Tato Mam Tattvato Gyatva Vishate Tad Anantaram. Vishate means to enter. To enter into the kingdom of God, the visa is Bhakti or devotional service. If the one does not have devotional attitude, he is not admitted himself. Yeah, you can so-called come to the spiritual world, stay in the sky and go back. But there are also examples where um, those who are liberated and who are not yet devotees, they associated with devotees and became devotees and admitted into the Bible. But, why the risk? If one is performing so much uh, hard work, hard austerities, why to achieve, um, why to do all that for a position of insecurity? One rather uh, should aspire for the position of security under the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Yeah. Anadrita, Anadrita means have no regard, 
युष्मदया अनादत मीन नेग्लेक्टिंग डिवोशन टू So, because they will neglect the lotus feet of Krishna, Abhaya Charanara Bhanda, the lotus feet of Krishna is said Abhaya, it's an abode of fearlessness, because there is no question of fall down, Yadgatva Nanivartante, fearless, no more coming back, because the material world is fearless, uh, fearful, you know, power ga, material life is power ga, what is that? Power ga, the, the, that series of alphabets in the Sanskrit consonants. So, this is Pavarga. So, material life is always called Pavarga and liberation is called Apavarga, opposite. Why, it is called, why material life is called Pavarga? Pa, Pa stands for Parishram or hard labor. Here, to live in this material world, even to maintain our bodies, we have to perform hard labor. Otherwise, we cannot even maintain ourselves. Actually, the Lord arranges for everybody's maintenance, but uh, still, uh, one has to work. According to the prescribed, you know, uh, influence of the modes of material nature, and he has to work. In chapter 3, text 5 of Bhagavad Gita also Krishna says, without uh, work, one cannot maintain his body even. That is a fact. So, uh, that is one thing, that is Parishram. Very hardly. Then, Pha. Pha stands for uh, Phena or, uh, what is that? Foaming. Foaming from the mouth. So much hard labor, you know, like, the ass or the horse, when they are very exhausted, or even the dog also we can see, when they are very exhausted, they foam, even the humans also. When they are totally exhausted, they foam from the mouth. And such is the uh, hard work one must perform. Karshati, it is very difficult. All men are forced to act helplessly according to the impulses born of the modes of material nature. Therefore, no one can refrain from doing something not even for a moment. Now, this is one thing. Actually, there is another verse. One cannot even maintain one's body without work. So, this is the point. And then, pa, parishram, pa, phena, uh, ba, vyarthatha, frustration. Yes, we see. Yes, we see. So, vyarthatha, frustration. After working so hard, one will not get desired result. The desired result, even if one gets, one will still not be satisfied because he wants something more. There is no end. Kamadhanam katina katidha palita durnidesha tesham jata jata mayinak trapano pashanti karuna trapano pashanti. The senses uh, will not uh, leave us alone. Oh, you have satisfied me all right, I am satisfied. No, they will ask for more. It's like fire is there, his fire is hungry for fuel. Once we feed the fuel, uh, he will ask for more. He will become bigger fire now. Oh, I want more fuel. You give and then you bigger fire. The fire will never end. So this lust, the propensity to enjoy a material world, to dominate the material world, is just like fire. Actually, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita um, describes that this uh, lust is just like fire. So, this is how uh, lust is, you will never be satisfied. So, therefore, there is frustration. And because there is not only that, my sense gratification, your sense gratification, I am competing. When I am fighting for sense gratification, and I am living in this world with so many people who also want sense gratification, there is bound to be strife. So anyway, so the last is like fire is, is explained. So uh, when we compete each other with each other, then there is fight. 
This is explained in the Bhagavatam. Read the next verse. Anyway, we will read this also. All the senses have been under the control of the mind since time immemorial, and the mind himself never comes under the sway of any other. He is stronger than the strongest, and his godlike power is fearsome. Therefore, anyone who can bring the mind under control becomes the master of all the senses. Next one. Tandurjayam shatrum asahya vegam arun tudam tanna vijitya kechit kurvantya sadvigraha matra madhya yal mitran udasina rikun vimodha. Mitrani, udasina and rikun. You see now, what is that? Mitrani means friends. Udasina means indifferent persons and Rikun means rival. Failing to conquer this irrepressible enemy, the mind, whose urges are intolerable and who torments the heart. See, he torments the heart. Aruntudam torments the heart. Many people are completely bewildered and create useless quarrel with others. Thus they conclude that other people are either their friends, their enemies or parties indifferent to them. You know, it's also explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Icha Dvesha Samuthena Dvanda Mohena Bharata. So, Icha Dvesha, uh, according to desire and hate, we have, uh, we calculate people according to our, uh, how much they favor our sense gratification and how much they are against our. They don't favor our sense gratification. This is how we create enemies and friends in this material world. Why is somebody my friend? Because he says um, what I do is right and you know he helps me in my sense gratification. That's why he's my friend. And when uh, my sense gratification is disturbed by somebody and he's my enemy. So the whole center is our sense gratification. This is why um, we make different kind of relationships with people in this world. Sarva Bhutani Samoham Sarge Parantapa O Sayan of Bharata Arjuna O conqueror of the four All living entities are born into delusion overcome by the dualities of desire and hate. So, um, this is the position of uh, Conditioned souls, dualities of desire and hate. But a devotee, he has no enemies. Ajata Shatru. Why? Because he has no sense gratification. Nishkam. Krishna Bhakta Nishkam. Ataiva Shanta. Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakaliya Shanta. Krishna Bhakta Nishkam Ataiva Shanta. So, um, bhukti, sense gratification. Bhukti kami means sense gratification, the one who desires sense gratification. Mukti kami, one who desires liberation. And siddhi kami, those who desire mystic perfections. So, the karmis, jnanis and yogis, sakali ashanta, they do not have peace. Because they have competition always. They have always trouble. Because this material nature won't let us be happy. Huh? But uh, Krishna Bhakta Nishka, Atayeva Shanta, he does not, Krishna Bhakta, he has no uh, desire of sense gratification. Therefore, he is actually Shanta, full of peace. Uh, but because of materialists are always, their desire is not bound to be frustrated. So, Vyartatha, Pa, Pa, Ba. And then Bha stands for Bhaya. This is the actual point we were discussing. Bhaya. This material world is fearful because why? 
Why fear arises? Oh, this is not here. This is there, 11th point. Bhayam vidya bhinivesata syat ishad apetasya viparya yosmati. This is the reason of fear. Bhayam vidya bhinivesata syat. Fear arises when a living entity misidentifies himself as the material body because of absorption in the external illusory energy of the Lord. When the living entity thus turns away from the Supreme Lord, he also forgets his own constitutional position as a servant of the Lord. This bewildering fearful condition is affected by the potency for illusion called Maya. Therefore, an intelligent person should engage unflinchingly in the unalloyed devotional service of the Lord under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master whom he should accept as his worshipable deity and as his very life and soul. So, why did fear arises? When we go away from the Lord, uh, away from the lotus feet of the Lord. Misident- when we misidentify ourselves with matter, that's when fear arises. So, pa, kha, ba, bha, and ma, ma for mrityu or maran, death. So, this is power ga. material life is power ga. hard labor, um, so much so that foaming, that means extremely hard labor, and then there is frustration because the desires are not met. Um, as a, there is a saying, the God has made for everyone's need but not for everyone's greed. See? So, there is frustration and then fear and then finally death. This is material life. Power God. Upper means exactly the opposite. There is no hard work. Practically, Kevala Ananda Kanda. What is that? Parama Karana Pahudvijana Kevala Ananda Kanda. Sorry, Nitai Gaura Chanda. Sabhavatar Sar Shiromani Kevala Ananda Kanda. So, uh, especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's process of uh, devotional service, chanting, dancing, and taking Krishna Prasadam, this is full of Ananda. And Krishna also said, Susukham Kartum Abhyayam. The devotee's uh, life is full of bliss. Susukham Kartum Abhyayam. Full of happiness. And Pratyakshavagamam Dharmyam. One can see the result immediately. Not that one, has, one is doing something and not sure whether the result is there or not. No. Very Pratyaksha. Very. Uh, uh, Tangible, tangible result. Bhakti, Parashana, Bhava, Virakti. Tangible results. So, but uh, the materialist, Karshati. 15 chapter 7th verse. Manashasthani Indriyani Prakriti Sthani Karshati. Full of uh, struggle. Struggle for existence. And those who are after liberation, so called, this uh, impersonal, klesha adhikatras tesham abhyakta asakta chetasam, again klesha. So there is klesha means again trouble. So uh, the bhukti mukti siddhikam is full of troubles. But Krishna bhakta nishtam, he is troubleless, he has no troubles. So, but Dhruva Maharaj, he, uh, had, he started off with a very uh, uh, very strong vengeance against his stepmother. And this is a very important point. Uh, when one becomes a devotee, he repents his previous uh, past activities before he was a devotee. This is a symptom of a devotee. Uh, he repents. Actually, there is a there is a verse. There is a verse. Yes. This is in the third round of the very first chapter. This is actually in the chapter where the description of the uh, fetus within the womb of the mother, what uh, he goes through, that life is described. 
and there the baby, you know, the pious soul is praying like this. I, the pure soul, appearing now bound by my activities and lying in the womb of my mother by the arrangement of Maya, I offer my respectful obeisances unto him who is also here with me but who is unaffected and changeless. He is unlimited but he is perceived in the repentant heart. To him I offer my respectful obeisances. This is the point actually. Repentant heart. What is the word let's see? Atapyamana, hmm? repentant. Atapyamana hridaye. So, Repent. This repenting is very important. It purifies the soul. Repenting. Not that, oh, whatever I've done, that is, you know. And sometimes they glorify, I did this, I did that. No, a devotee is always repenting. He does not take pride in whatever he did as a non devotee. He repents all that he did, how fallen I am, what all have I not done. You know, forgetting you, my Lord. So this is how a devotee is always thinking, I am very fallen. He is never, oh, I am now a great devotee. No. I am very fallen. Nich jati, nich sangi, patita dham. Who is this? Sanatana Goswami is saying this. Nich jati, when he approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, I am nich jati, nich sangi, patita dham. Purishera, uh, what is it? Let's see the verse. Kuvishaya Kope. Pari Gonayana Gwainu Jana Nichi Jati Nichi Sanghi Patita Adham Kukishaya Kupe Pari Gwainu Jana So in saying Sanatana Goswami said, I was born in a low family. I know actually Sanatana Goswami was born in the Saraswat Brahmin family. The most exalted Brahmin family in the whole of India. Keshav Kashmiri was from that, you know, Saraswat Brahmin. Very, very exalted Brahmin family. But you see how he's been. I was born in a low family and my associates are all low class men. Because he actually went into the service of the Nawab Hussain Shah. And so practically he was evicted from the Hindu community. And because he was serving the Muslim king. And um, you know, he was associating with all the meat eaters, eating meat. Um, so, uh, he was considered Nietzsche Sanghi. I was associating with all kinds of meat eaters. And sense gratifiers. You know, king means what? Women, wine, and everything is free flow. There is no limit. So, he was associating with all these people. So, he said, I am Nietzsche Sanghi. Patita Adham. I am the lowest of men. Indeed, I have passed my whole life fallen in the well of sinful materialism. So this is how one is always uh, repenting. So, um, Dhru Maharaj also, he was repenting, he was very unhappy. This is the classic example of devotee. He is uh, totally unhappy with, uh, he was ashamed at how I asked, how I, you know, like a so-called uh, uh, renounced person, I have renounced my palace and everything at the age of five and I went to the forest and everything and even met such a great saintly person as Naradhuni who was advising me not to be very much uh, you know, disturbed by such words of the stepmother. But I rejected all that good counsel and I had come to the forest as if I was a big renunciate but I, in my heart was the greatest material desire. How fallen I am. But the Lord is so kind that he did not see this uh, uh, negativity in me. He took the positive side of me uh, uh, because I was uh, rendering service, although for a material reason, he took that service and he rewarded me for that service. 
both materially and spiritually. How I was so undeserving of this uh, benediction, but how the Lord is so kind upon me that He gave me everything that I asked for and also much more than I could even ask for. That's why that verse is there, Kacham Vichinman Napidipya Ratnam Sthana Vilashi Tapasisthitoham Swam Praptavan Deva Mahindra Bhutyam Kacham Vichinman Napidipya Ratnam Swamin Pritartha Sthitoham Nayache See? Very beautiful verse actually. When he was being blessed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Guru Maharaj said, O oh my Lord, because I was seeking an opulent material position, I was performing severe types of penance and austerity. Now I have gotten you who are very difficult for the great demigods, saintly persons and kings to attain. I was searching after a piece of glass, but instead I have found a most valuable jewel. Therefore I am so satisfied that I did not that I do not wish to ask any benediction from you. I asked for broken pieces of glass, but Krishna gave me a diamond. I do not know what was good for me. This is exactly what Sanatana Goswami also said. Uh, what is that? Gramya Vivahare Kohe Pandit Tai Satyamani Apanar Hitahit Kichwi Na Jan. That verse is very nice. Apanar Hitahit Kichuina Jami, Gramma Vavahare Pandit, Gramma Vavahare Pandit Tai Satyamani. Sanatan Goswami is saying this I do not know what is beneficial for me or what is detrimental. Nonetheless, in ordinary dealings, people consider me a learned scholar and I am also thinking of myself as such. You know, anybody who is a Brahmin uh, family, people call him Pandit, oh Panditji or Maharajji. So they call Brahmin like this, Pandit. So, Gramya Vavahare Kohe Pandit. The, in ordinary people, in course of dealings, people call me Pandit. Pandit means learned man. But just because of my birth, they call me Pandit. But I am such a Pandit, I am such a learned man, that I do not know what is good for me, what is not good for me. I have taken uh, what is not good for me as, as if it was good for me. This is the... See, Sanatana Goswami is one of the six Goswamis, direct disciple of Lord Chaitanya. But by his behavior, he is teaching us that what is the use of big, big position, material position and all these things and big reputation in the among the worldly people when one does not know what is good for him. Na sadhu manye yatatmanoyam asanna pikleshad asadeha not good. Na sadhu means not good. What is not good? Nate vidur swartha gadami vishnu durasa hai vairatma. No, not that part. Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma. Yad indriya prite aprinoti. This indriya prite, uh, this is called sense gratification. This is not good. So, Sanatana Goswami is saying, I have engaged all my life in sense gratification. And I thought that this was good for me. Dhanam, Janam, Sundarim. I do not know what is good and what was not good for me. Mm-hmm. Such a great Pandit. So, Dhruva Maharaj also is feeling like that. He was very much ashamed. But although he went with such a, a demoniac uh, intention, any, any desire to dominate over this material world is demonic. But fortunately, the fortunate thing is that he approached Vishnu for that. Therefore, Vishnu offered him benediction in such a way that he gave him whatever he wanted, but at the same time he made him forget whatever he wanted. <laughs> this is the beauty of Lord Vishnu. Satyam Dishatya Thitam Arthito Nirnam Naiva Thado Yatunar Arthita Yatam Swayam Vipate Bhadatam and Chatam Nichapitanam Nijapada Talam 
The Supreme Personality of Godhead fulfills the material desires of a devotee who approaches him with such motives, but he does not bestow benedictions upon the devotee that will cause him to demand more benedictions again. See, he gave material desires of a devotee who approached him with that such motive. Guru Maharaj, he gave him. But he knew that he will not ask him again. There will be no more asking after this. However, the Lord willingly gives the devotee shelter at his own lotus feet, even though such a person does not aspire for it. And that shelter satisfies all his desires. That is the Supreme Personality, special mercy. So this is exactly what he did for Guru Maharaj. Although he did not ask. See? So one must always um, uh, go to Krishna even if one has material desires. He will be purified, but of course one must be as determined as is required. You know, but some people are there who just come to Krishna and you know ask for something material, and once it is fulfilled, they uh, you know forget. That class of people are also there. But then Krishna will also work through his agency Maya and put some more screws, tighten the screws, other parts of life. Then again they have to again come back to the temple. Pray. And then once they keep coming back like that, uh, then, then one day they will become pure devotees. So it is better not to have such desires. Anguliyana Krishna Nasiranam, Anyabhilashita Sunyam, Anyabhilashita Sunyam, that is Bhakti Ruttama, Anyabhilashita Sunyam, Jnana Karma, Janavritam, Anguliyana Krishna Nasiranam, Bhakti Ruttama. The highest devotion, devotion is to serve Krishna without any abhilash, without any motive. Ahai kiki, apratihata, yayatma suprasidati. Then one will be completely satisfied. So, any questions or comments on this topic? Is there a question on Facebook? Very slow when I'm doing this live streaming. The computer will come slow. I need to have another device. Is there anything else? Can anybody see? No question there. Okay. All right, we'll end here. Ganjara Smith Bhagavan Ki, Prabhupada Ki. I go to my